Hello, just something quick about a uh, Twitter exchange that happened today. Um, and because I want to test out the microphone, people have been uh, suggesting that the volume needs to be turned up on all of my videos. I know I'm uh, technically incompetent, but I have all sorts of equipment around me at the moment that I haven't got on camera, but I'm doing my best to improve. The exchange was between David Deutsch and Claire Lemon, I believe her name is, and uh, they were talking about the extent to which people can have genetically determined traits that in fact are mental traits. Um, so I'm just reading the uh, exchange here uh, where uh, Claire um, Lehman, Lehman, she said, uh, Le I apologize. Um, uh, she says, in short, the idea that people can't be born bad is just blank slate nonsense. Like all traits, psychopathy is heritable. Um, now, it seems to be that there is a choice that we're expected to make. And the choice that we're expected to make is whether or not the blank slate is true. In other words, people are born without any genetic predispositions towards any kind of behavior, or um, our behavior is genetically determined, at least in part. And these are the two choices that you have. Um, you, your, your behavior is determined by your genes, at least in part, or not at all. There's a third way. There's a third way that doesn't involve ideas coming to us via our genes, or insofar as they do, nonetheless they remain ideas that can be changed. There is a third way. Uh, we do not have to choose between genetic determinism, whether it's some kind of underdeterminism where not all of your behaviors are genetically determined, but at least some of them are, or on the other hand, the blank slate hypothesis. And this is the idea where none of your behaviors are determined by your genes. Well, the third way is that whilst you might have genetically determined behaviors that you are born with, these behaviors are caused by ideas. Sam Harris likes to say that belief is the lever that pushes behavior, something like that. Um, and I think it's quite right that, that insofar as you have uh, knowledge, I would say, rather than belief, uh, that you have ideas, that these are the things that cause you to uh, carry out the behaviours that you do. Now, the question then is, what, to what extent are the genes that we have, our genetic information, informing our behaviours? Let's take a specific example. You know, struggle to come up with something that's not controversial, but um, what about that human babies have an instinct for suckling? They have an instinct for suckling at breast to get milk. No one seems to teach them this. They do a sucking motion if you've ever known a baby. They, they, they seem to be born with this. It's inborn. It's genetic. It's an instinct. At some point, they cease to do this. We move beyond this behavior. Insofar as it's, as it's an instinct, somehow we don't do it anymore. Now, people might say, well, we grow out of it. What I want to say to that is, if it's in the genes, the DNA does not change. So that behavior, which I would suggest is indeed an instinct, is indeed coded somehow in the DNA, is nonetheless expressed in the mind, in the brain, which then causes behavior, the sucking behavior that babies have. And although the genes have put it into the mind in some way that we don't understand, once there, it is subject to precisely the same sorts of processes that any other idea in our mind is subject to. In particular, it's subject to improvement, it's subject to criticism, and it's subject to change. Whatever the idea is that's in our mind can be changed.
It doesn't matter if the source is instinctual or genetic. It doesn't matter where the idea came from. If it's been encoded in our genes, this does not mean it determines our behavior because we can change whatever the idea which was determined by genetics is. So if the genes determine some kind of idea in our mind, which then determines behavior, I think it's a three-step process. It's not genes or behavior. You must pass through the mind. The mind part can always be changed. So all inborn traits, of which I would suggest there are many, are ideas and they can be changed. They might be hard to change. I admit they might be hard to change. But we're not condemned in some way by virtue of having genes that Claire is suggesting provide us with a propensity for certain kinds of behaviors. We are not condemned to carry out those. I'll just return to, um, to Claire's response um, to David. David. David says at some point, so since bad in this context is fearless plus something, some are born fearless does not imply some are born bad, unless the something is also inborn, right? Claire agrees. She says, okay, so I should have said the idea that people can't be born with a predisposition for being bad is blank slate nonsense. So this idea of being born with a predisposition, um, yes, we can be born with a predisposition towards suckling milk at the breast. <laughs> we move beyond it. We change our ideas about that. And in fact, we're taught that we no longer need to do that. It would be a very strange society we would be in if we were unable to move beyond that. In fact, all of us, all of us move beyond it. So that inborn behavior, inborn genetic information, which makes its way into our minds to cause us to control our bodies, in such a way that we do suckle at the breast up until we don't anymore because we've changed our mind is a predisposition. So now let's take Claire seriously on this point. If some people are born with a predisposition for being bad, this does not mean they're going to be bad. This does not mean they're going to grow up being bad. Now I reject the notion they can be born with a predisposition for being bad. Okay, I think bad is such a general term, such a broad uh, uh, catch-all term, this idea of psychopathy, this idea that people behave in certain ways that we find objectionable. If something like suckling milk is a behavior that we are all born with, we're all predisposed to do, and we can all change, it is hard some people would say it's hardwired that you language that strong but somehow or other the hard wiring is undone so it can't be that hard it appears to be a software thing if that can be changed then if you can find genetics genetic information but some sort of coding for bad it too can be changed this predisposition is not a condemnation and if people were to go out actively searching for the genes that code for psychopathy and found it, that would be no more informative of a child or adolescent or adult's behavior than would finding the genes that code for suckling milk. Because even though everyone seems to be determined genetically to suckle milk, we move beyond it. So this idea of genetic predisposition or this idea of blank slateness are both incorrect. They're both incorrect because they fail to take seriously the notion that the brain is a computer upon which runs the software of the mind and the software of the mind can be overwritten with new ideas, with new knowledge, through conjecture, guessing new ideas and refutation, criticizing those ideas. This is how our mind works. This is how we learn. And regardless of whether or not the ideas that we have or some set of the ideas that we have are genetically predisposed, this does not change the fact that they are ideas. This does not change the fact that they are knowledge. And knowledge cannot be fixed. It cannot be constructed in such a way 
that it is immune from criticism unless we've taken on board some anti-rational memes. So, uh, this is the solution to the, the debate that's going on between the we're all a blank slate, <laughs> that we have no inborn ideas. And no, we do have some inborn ideas and they're genetically determined. You're ignoring the science. The, the, the way to resolve this is to recognize that it's not a blank slate, but the genetically determined ideas are not fixed. They remain ideas and they too can be changed, like all ideas. They don't have some sort of supernatural status. They're ideas, they're a form of knowledge, and they are subject to the same rules of epistemology, namely those that govern criticism and enable ideas to be changed as any other kind of knowledge. Now, hopefully my audio worked this time. Thank you.